so much for listening to the Timeless Tapestry podcast. If you enjoyed what we shared today, please help us by subscribing to the show. Not only will you be notified when the next one comes out, it also helps get the show out to many more people. We appreciate you and thank you so much for listening. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our cozy corner of the airwaves. I'm Dr. Laura Whitman, and with me, as always, is my dear friend and co-host, Mark. Today, we're diving into a topic that's close to both of our hearts, aren't we, Mark? Oh, you bet, Laura. Today, we're talking about how to create a safe and comfortable environment for our seniors to live out their golden years with dignity. And I gotta say, it's a topic that's getting more and more relevant for folks like me. It certainly is, Mark. And, you know, this topic actually came to mind after a visit I had with my Aunt Edna last weekend. She's been living in the same house for over 50 years. Can you believe that? And, while it's filled with memories, I realised it might not be equipped for her needs as she ages. It got me thinking about what changes might be needed to ensure her safety and comfort. Sat something, ain't it? A home filled with half a century of memories. Uh... It's precious, but yeah, safety and comfort become a big deal. Making a few adjustments here and there can really make a difference. And it's not just about adding those grab bars in the bathroom. It's the little things, too, that add up. Things. Exactly, Mark. And that's what we want to explore today. How can we maintain these cherished homes in a way that supports our seniors' wellness and independence? From regular maintenance to thoughtful adaptations, we'll cover it all. And let's not forget about the role of technology in all this. There are some pretty nifty gadgets out there that can help make life easier and safer for the elderly. Indeed. So, whether you're a senior yourself, taking care of an elderly loved one, or just planning ahead, Stick around. We've got plenty of stories, tips, and maybe a few laughs along the way, right, Mark? Hope there's always room for a laugh or two, Laura, especially when it comes to the quirks of getting older. Let's dive in, shall we? Let's do it. First up, let's talk about home maintenance. It's something we might not always associate with senior living, but boy, does it play a crucial role. Mark, you've got a bit of a knack for this. Where do we start? Well, Laura, I'd say we start with the basics. Regular checks and routine maintenance. You know it's like checking the oil in your car. You don't wait for it to break down. Homes are no different, especially when they're safeguarding our golden years. That's a great analogy, Mark. And it's not just about preventing mishaps. A well-maintained home can actually support a senior's health and well-being. Clean air filters, for example can make a big difference for those with respiratory issues. Sure, got it. And let's not forget the outside of the house, too. Those gutters aren't going to clean themselves. And let me tell you, a clogged gutter can lead to a whole host of problems down the line. Indeed, it can. And with the seasons changing, there's always something that needs attention, whether it's prepping for winter or getting ready for the summer heat. Speaking of which, Mark... Do you remember the story about your neighbour and the snowstorm? Oh, don't get me started, Laura. That was quite the ordeal, but it goes to show seasonal maintenance isn't just about comfort, it's about safety, too. Preparing ahead of time can save a lot of trouble when Mother Nature decides to show her strength. Absolutely. And it's a good reminder for all of us to take a proactive approach to maintenance. Speaking of which, we'd love to hear from our listeners. Have you got any home maintenance tips or stories to share? How do you keep your home safe and comfortable for the seniors in your life? Yeah, give us a holler. We're all ears. And, and while we're waiting to hear from you, let's shift gears a bit and talk about creating a safe living environment. E Laura, you've got a story about this, don't you? I sure do, Mark. It involves my grandfather, a bathroom mat, and a lesson learned the hard way. But more on that after a short break. Uh, stay with us. Welcome back, folks. Laura was just about to share a story about her grandpa and uh, what sounds like a rogue bathroom mat. Laura, do tell. Oh, Mark, it was quite the wake-up call. My grandfather, bless his heart, took a tumble in the bathroom. That mat just slipped right out from under him. Thankfully, 
he was okay. But it got us thinking about all the ways a home can turn into an obstacle course for seniors. Oh, those darn mats, they're sneaky, aren't they? But you're right, Laura, it's those little things you don't think about that can become hazards. Uh, that's why I'm a big fan of those non-slip mats now. And grab bars. You can never have too many grab bars. Absolutely, Mark. And it's not just the bathroom that needs attention. Everything from loose rugs to poor lighting can create risks. We started replacing knobs with levers for easier handling, and let me tell you, it makes a difference. Levers, huh? That's smart. And speaking of lighting, better lighting is a game-changer, especially for those late-night trips to the fridge or bathroom. My folks, we put in some of those motion sensor lights for them. Now they don't have to fumble for switches in the dark. Motion sensor lights are a brilliant idea, Mark. And with technology today, there are so many gadgets that can help improve safety. For example, there are devices that alert you if a door or window is left open, or if the stove has been left on too long. Yeah, those gadgets can give you some peace of mind for sure. My neighbour got one of those smart thermostats you can control from your phone. Helps him keep the house at a comfortable temperature without having to get up and down. It's amazing what technology can do these days. And speaking of technology, we want to hear from you, our listeners. Have you made any safety upgrades or technology improvements in your home to help out the seniors in your life? Share your experiences with us. Sure, let us know. It's always good to share ideas and learn from each other. Now, shifting gears a bit, independence for seniors is a big topic. Laura, you've made some adjustments in your own home for this, right? I have, Mark. It's all about making the home more accessible and comfortable. For instance, we installed a shower seat and handheld shower head. It's made a world of difference for my aunt. It's these small changes that can help seniors maintain their independence. That's spot on, Laura. And you know, at Memory Cherish, we see a lot of folks looking to adapt their homes for mobility reasons. Things like ramps or even just rearranging furniture to create wider pathways can make a big difference. Indeed, Mark. And let's not forget the importance of comfortable seating and easy-to-use appliances. Making the home senior-friendly doesn't have to be a massive overhaul. Sometimes it's the simple modifications that have the most impact. True that. And hey, listeners, we're curious. What modifications or aids do you think are essential for maintaining independence as we age? Drop us a line and let us know your thoughts. Yes, please do. Now, as we talk about ageing in place... There are times when more significant home modifications might be necessary. Mark, you've had some experience with this, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Installing ramps and stair lifts can be a game-changer for folks wanting to stay in their homes as they age. It's not just about access. It's about preserving a sense of normalcy and independence. That's a powerful point, Mark. And, drawing from my background in art history... I see the home as a living space that reflects and adapts to our life's journey. Making adaptations in key living areas, like the bathroom and kitchen, can significantly enhance seniors' quality of life. Absolutely, Laura. It's about making the home fit the person, not the other way around. And sometimes that means looking at things like counter heights or even the type of flooring. It's all about creating a space where seniors can feel secure and comfortable. Well said, Mark. And it's not just about the physical space. Preparing for health emergencies is another critical aspect of creating a safe living environment for seniors. Mark, you have a personal story about a fire scare, right? Yeah, that was a wake-up call for sure. My neighbour's house had a small fire because of an electrical fault. It really drove home the importance of having working smoke detectors and a clear emergency plan, especially for seniors who might not move as quickly. It's a stark reminder of the importance of being prepared, and that includes medication management and having a list of emergency contacts easily accessible it's all part of creating a safe and supportive environment where seniors can thrive. Uh, absolutely. And, and um, you know, leveraging community and healthcare resources can play a big role in this too. There's a lot of support out there uh, from home health services to, to community programs designed to help seniors stay safe and independent at home. That's a great point, Mark. And it's a good segue into our next topic. 
And we're back, folks. Before the break, Laura mentioned tapping into community and healthcare resources, which is a gold mine of support for seniors living at home. Laura, where should folks start with this? Well, Mark, a good starting point is often the local senior centre or community health office. They can provide information on everything from meal delivery services to transportation assistance. And let's not forget about home modification programmes that might be available to help with safety upgrades. That's a good call, Laura. And speaking of upgrades, navigating Medicare benefits can sometimes feel like you're trying to read a map without your glasses. But there's help out there for that too. Some benefits can cover things like durable medical equipment or even certain home health services. Exactly, Mark. It's all about knowing where to look and asking for help when you need it. Collaborating with healthcare providers can also open up avenues for support that you might not have known existed. They can guide you to resources tailored to your needs or the needs of your loved ones. Yeah, and don't be shy about reaching out. Remember, folks, it's all about creating a network of support. And speaking of support, we'd love to hear from our listeners. Have you found any resources or programmes particularly helpful for senior living? Share your stories with us. Sharing is caring, after all. Now, moving on, we've received some fantastic questions from our listeners over the past weeks, and we thought it'd be great to address some of those here. Mark, what's one question that stood out to you? Well, Laura, one listener asked about how to mitigate safety hazards in the home without making it feel like, well, a hospital. It's a great question because you want the home to remain homey, right? Absolutely, Mark. And it's all about balance. Using decorative grab bars that match your bathroom's aesthetic, for example, or choosing furniture that is both stylish and functional can keep the home feeling warm and inviting. There are so many options out there that don't sacrifice style for safety. Right you are, Laura. And another question we got was about keeping seniors active and engaged at home. To that, I say, think about hobbies or activities your loved ones enjoy. There are plenty of home-based activities, from gardening to painting, that can keep the mind and body sharp. That's a wonderful suggestion, Mark. Keeping the brain active is just as important as physical safety. Now, as we start wrapping up today's episode, let's summarise our key points. Creating a safe, comfortable and independent living environment for seniors is about regular maintenance, thoughtful adaptations and leveraging technology and community resources. Couldn't have said it better myself, Laura. And, you know, getting older might mean making some changes here and there, but it's all about living those golden years to the fullest. And, hey, if that means installing a fancy new shower head or getting one of them smart thermostats, then I say bring it on. Chuckles. That's the spirit, Mark. And let's not forget, as we make these adaptations and capture these new memories, there's always a way to cherish the old ones. That's where memory cherish comes in helping to preserve the memories of these golden years through photo restoration. Ah, preserving memories. That's something we can all get behind. It's been a great chat today, Laura, and a big thank you to our listeners for tuning in and sharing your stories. We hope you found some useful tips and maybe even a bit of inspiration. Yes, thank you, everyone. Your stories and questions really bring our little community to life. Don't forget to tune in for our next episode where we'll explore another fascinating topic that's sure to spark some joy and curiosity. <sighs> Until then, take care and keep making those homes a safe haven for all the golden years to come. <laughs> <laughs>